Algebra 2A, Red Class. It is um, Monday, May 1, uh, May Day, which I didn't even know May Day was a thing, but I heard it on the news. Um, apparently, May Day is when you you can protest stuff, you can try and make things better, I, I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, it is May Day. Um, I'll let you fight with it. I'm going to try to punch this thing into the calculator and produce a table. But here's my recommendation when you do each one, each fraction, put a parenthesis. So, of course, go to your white table. Uh, I would go um, parenthesis, one divided by six, close parenthesis. Then hit the X. And try to raise that to the third power. Then when you get to the next fraction, minus parenthesis, 13 divided by six, close parenthesis. Uh, then X to the plus two. Um, again, I'm starting to here just so it can feel okay just for a second. Um, and we'll put a table on this one. That way, if you try to use this one of your six pages, it would be there. I'm going to try to do it as well so I can at least know what your table should look like. Um, so again, your Y equals, if it's something your Y equals, you can hit clear, something that was on mine. I'll pause this right now. On this picture, I want you to make your line of symmetry. You have uh, rulers out there. Um, and so, line of symmetry is the equation Y equals X. Y equals X is always a diagonal line. And again, uh, the main goal right now is to uh, make sure that you have, so with your rulers, if you're, I mean, not that you need the points, but those two little points there, if you line up your ruler just right, we'll get you your line of symmetry. So on this problem, I'm putting your line of symmetry, those is way ugly. Put in your line of symmetry. Corner to corner. Um, put LOS, and then put y equals x. Yeah, I think you're going to use part of this uh, handout for as your six pages, but again, I think handout for would be uh, more difficult, more than it's worth to try and make it part of your six. Um, and then the last part uh, on the picture. So again, LOS, that's important. Um, three dots, most of you did that well, and I'm going to try and get back to an equation now. I'll go back and do an old one, and then go from there, and then hopefully by the time it counts on eight, I pass it back to you. There are two questions at the end on the back, which... Um, we may fix those and ask you uh, if you're going to move the picture up or down. What would you do? Of course, you put plus or minus something at the very end of whatever equation was there. Uh, the other question asks you, hey, how do you change um, the slope to be a new number and the y-intercept to be a new number? And again, um, you just actually just change the numbers. You've got to know which one is the slope, the number come back, just change that to a new number. Whatever the y-intercept is, at the very end, just change it to a new number. Some people did that very well. Others uh, didn't even get to that question. All right, here we go. Um, let me do three of them. Uh, find an equation to change, and then give it to you right there. Um, let's see. If I'm doing three of them, let's do this guy here. What is he? He's a negative four. If you're five, he's a negative three. Negative three and a what? A four. I'm going to name him A, even though if I were doing this, he would be A, B, and C. I wonder if I should actually do that. Maybe I should do that, so let me change. This guy's still going to be named, but as a rule for those who are doing it, the first point for this left, make him A. The second guy, make him B. The third guy, make him C. On your assessment, three points is enough. This one has a million points, but if you're doing this on an assessment, I would say just do three points. The other part that's important is, yes, on this picture, they helped us by um, giving us the dots. They made the dots really big and pronounced so I could tell, oh, that's a point. Oh, that's a point. Oh, that's a point. But on your assessment, the mini assessment, they don't put the big, the big dots. You have to be able to tell if it's on a corner. Are there any dots that aren't on a the corner? They gave us every single one of them. I wish they didn't give me one so I could show you how to find it. Uh, if it hits the corner of a dot of a square, that kind of lets you know, oh, I can use that. And again, that wasn't a big deal for most of you. The big deal for most of you is time. I'm still going to try and give you uh, 20 minutes on this one, uh, 15, 20. And again, what if you finish early? Start looking through handout one, handout two, handout three, handout four. Oh, this might be a good page one of my six. Let me work on it. That kind of thing. All right. Um, so step one, let me put in these in. Point A, what is uh, your coordinates? You back up five, you go down to what? Negative six, seven, eight, negative eight? Negative five, eight. Sorry about the negative if that messes with any of you. Um, this guy here, he backs up to what, a negative 4. But since he doesn't go up or down on the Y, he's at 0 on the Y. There's 1 on the Y, 
There's negative one on the y, this is zero on the y. So whenever you're just on the line, you're there. Um, for those of you who are super at uh, plotting, um, then this is not a big deal. Here comes the new stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I need the points. I get the coordinates. Um, how do I do the inverse? And that's the big deal here. So the word inverse is on here. There it is. Do me a favor, please circle inverse. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to find the inverse of the picture, inverse of the table. Um, which, by the way, let me do a quick table. The original numbers um, versus the inverse. Um, the table, I'm just going to do two numbers, a zero and a one. Um, I actually do more than that on test zero and one. There's original table. Um, what was the partner to zero? I think it was a two. Was it a two? And the partner to the one was. Oh, was it zero? Oh, that's weird. All right. What I did here is just that table that you punch into the calculator, you know, no big deal. How do you do the inverse table? You just switch. Like, everything is about to switch. Uh, do the reverse. Um, so here, if I were to do this guy, the zero that was there on the x max would be on the y, and the y we just again most people you your table were fine, no big deal. You did the original table and then you flipped it to get the reverse. Um, well, are you saying it, Tom? So, well, because it's been from Wednesday to Monday. There's some people in here they don't remember ever even doing this. Like I've never even seen this before. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, but there's some people like, okay, I got a memory. Oh yeah, I can't remember this. I see it on my paper, or whatever. Uh, and then when I do that one equation, then that will be it. Um, so here we go. Tick, 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 tick. What do we need now? We got the original, OG, the inverse. You need tables for all three of them. The picture, you need now this problem here. I am not... I'm not going to be able to, to, uh, to solve it for the inverse because it's still big and ugly. I'm going to use a smaller one. And on the assessment... Um, you have small ones. Um, why don't you did one of the equations, but uh, maybe right now. Time. Again, for those who didn't hear, if you do two of them super good and that third one's a little bit shaky because there are three pictures you have to work with, I'm kind of okay with these. Um, if you can do two, technically you can do three with a little bit of help. All right, Thomas, uh, let's reverse this thing and plot the new thing. So to get the inverse, you just reverse them and name it a new letter. So here, let's reverse you, make you an 85, and give you a new name, a prime. Prime says it's the new thing. Reverse this, what will the reverse of the uh, 4, 0 be? Uh, 0, 4. So yeah. On this guy here, you have the green, the 4 came first, and 0 came so it's a split one. And then the last one. Uh, the 34 is going to be what? Uh, 43, and I know technically there's uh, actually. Uh, so again, this part, um, why is it taking time to part the No, I don't know. Sometimes it's good to be behind the part you know so that you make sure you have that. And that one is trying to fix something often that's broken. Because on Wednesday, really, I'm going to try and make it a time where we're trying to really gather um, six stages. One other thing I should note this is Unit 5, yes. If you have a Unit 4, Unit 3 outstanding, and you complete Unit 5 somehow, Unit 5 doesn't exist until 1 through 4 are done. Uh, so in a sense, this helps you go back. Yeah, we never kind of did this on Unit 5. But that's fine. All right, uh, then we're going to plot uh, ABC. Plot the red stuff, the uh, primes. When you plot the primes, some people just put the letter prime, which I'm kind of okay as long as you had the reverse next door to the old thing. Um, the other part that's unfortunate is I get two different colors. You have the same color, so it's it's a little bit hard to see uh, grading. Uh, so here we go. Let's see. I'm going to start with A. 8, negative 5. Where are you? 8, negative 5. Is that a negative 8? Negative 5. Yeah. Negative 5, 8. Negative 5. Negative 8. Come on. You can do this. 1, 2, 3. It's on the same thing. I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. How did I wind up in the same place? Uh, it happens sometimes, uh, but not all the time. By the way, this red line of symmetry is important, so you need to have there six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put 
day prime next to him, which I guess is close enough already for me to just take it. So, but I'll still put an A prime above it, which making it in red is probably a bad idea. But I think they get the idea. Um, where's B? B, you're a, a zero, four, four, negative four, and a zero. Negative four and a zero. Uh, there's B prime. And where's my four, negative three? Four, negative three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now this is the ugly picture, which is why I didn't do it to begin with. I'm only doing this picture now because we, we used all the other ones. And it should redo one that we already have. Yes, please. Okay, so this time because we need to get to the actual part that people didn't do the most on, which is the equation. Uh, same idea. And if a person would have missed that, I kind of probably would have worked with them because I can tell they gave me the original, they gave me the prime, the new one, the dot was in the neighborhood, it's just a slight miscalculation. So the goal is, isn't to get you the goal is, hey, do you know how to get the inverse of something? Inverse, reverse, inverse, reverse, inverse, reverse. All right, connect these uh, these dots with the blue line. A, B, C. That looks weird. But my job is to to tell uh, to determine whether it's weird and right or weird and wrong. Is just connect the letters in the correct order. As I do this, um, I'm reminded of uh, this weekend I, I heard uh, a lecture. All right, I'm going to page 10 briefly. What is it going to do on page 10? It's going to solve this equation, which will get one of them, and maybe make up um, two more, and then let it go. Um, did we do this one? But, uh, did I solve the equation on it? I don't think I did minus 3 and then divide by 5, whatever. So I'm going to remind you of the equation part. That's the tricky part. Um, but on some other page, and I did one with the radical. I can't remember what page on the bottom was. I'll try and make it up on this page. Again, technically, if we're doing uh, six pages, uh, these would be it. But these are some tough six pages to do. Get ready. Here goes, Thomas. Hey, um, please circle inverse. Circle inverse. Inverse, reverse. Hey, Thomas, could you find the inverse? of uh, this um, y equals uh, 0 0.5 x plus 3. This is an easy one, so take this one as a freebie. Step one, you switch the x and the y. Um, again, some people, when I give you a like, what? Why did it so hard? Um, step one is switch and solve. I guess if I write a phrase somewhere, I write inverse is switch and plus solve. If solve means nothing to you, it means get a letter alone. It means like junior high mean girls uh, isolate that one girl, uh, Marshana. I remember that year number three. This year number 23. I can still remember it. They're so mean to her. In any case, I'm going to switch the X and the Y. Step one, switch. I'm going to leave the uh, Y as red so you can see that's the only thing that. Switch. Um, can I get that Y at all? Switch and solve. Again, this is going to be one of your six pages uh, you have. Um, so again, there will be two little mini teaching sessions. This one, let you work, let you work. Um, some of you will finish earlier than others. If you finish earlier, you'll give me your uh, your test bag, and then you'll take out your work time and see if you find six pages on any of the handouts. Handout one, two, three, or four. That's where six pages. You'll identify it. I think this is going to be one of my pages. Put a check mark on it. I keep going. Uh, can someone tell me the first thing I'm going to do to solve for y? Now that's subtract three. The furthest away from the y is we get rid of first. If this was a boat sinking, um, three would be your cousin. Um, five would be your your brother, your sister. I'm going to assume you like them for this example. Uh, if you have to throw someone overboard, the ship is going down, your cousin has to go first. Sorry. Uh, so you get rid of them first. Why not with the x minus 3? Um, 0.5 in the y. And then if 
if it's between you and your brother or your sister, um, everyone has an instinct to survive. You know, no one, no one usually lets it go, except on uh, Titanic and uh, uh, Rose and the guy who I'm never going to let go. And he didn't, but he did for like, Whatever, whatever, I'm just going. All right, uh, if you haven't seen Titanic, he makes it in the end. All right, here it comes. Um, Next move, we get rid of the, the 0.5. It's being multiplied, so we're going to do the button. Once you do this division, you're not getting an actual answer answer. You're just getting the Y alone. Uh, I'm running out of space to write. And here's this extra piece. At this point, I want to give you the points. I want to see you did it. Uh, you solved it. The only extra thing uh, they're going to do, and in this case is a weird one, Usually the pump starts off by giving it like a function title, like, oh, this is a, yeah, f of x, oops, f of x equals that thing, but this time they didn't. So if they don't, for our purposes, for our purposes, um, we're going to call them all f of x if they don't give us uh, a name. Like, it's g of x, it's g of x. And again, for those who are um, thrown off by that whole thing, the f just says what type of uh, problem it is, the name of the problem. Like, can you find problem F for me? Oh, there is. Gotta have the F. Uh, or if we're a car, like, um, what kind of car are you driving? Oh, it's, it's a Honda. Where's the Honda? Oh, it's an F car. I'm driving an F car. The X is who's riding in it. Okay. X gets to ride in my car. In other words, in this problem, there are only X's in it. Uh, if I change this to a Z, I don't want any X people in my car. I just want Z people in there. Then over here, all the letters would have to be Z's. So when you see f of x, it just says, hey, this is the type of car I have, and this is who writes it. This is the name of my problem, and these are the type of letters who get to be in my problem. So when you see function notation, that's what you think about it. So over here, the inverse, we start with that original problem, that f of x problem. When you do the inverse, there's a way to say I changed it. The way to say I changed it is f inverse of x is how you read that. Not f to the negative one power of x, f inverse of x. Um, nonetheless, uh, this is the best looking problem, uh, best way of writing this problem here. With that green, uh, so if you were colorblind, you won't be able to see this. Um, they, they the green and red, their eyes can't distinguish between the two. Um, but if you got down to this y equals, and I had to be like, okay, point. All right, I'll let that one slide. Um, if you've been a mean person, like, no. All right, uh, let's see. Any questions about solving this guy? All right, I'll do a quick reminder of uh, two other types, and then I'll put it in your hand. This is just so that people with the equation have a fighting chance. Y equals radical x minus 7. I think I did this one before. I'll do it again. And then um, uh, y equals 5 to the x. Move them both super really fast. And then you get to what time it has only 11, no matter what. Someone says time, it means give it, uh, give it some sense. Uh, no matter what story you want to tell about whatever, sorry, you're out of time, Thomas. I'm finding the inverse of those that exist on your paper somewhere. Uh, so if you want to just watch, you can. Step one, switch. Um, here we go. The x equals a radical something minus 7 is going to be a y. We switch it. Um, up. I don't want to feel the rhythm. Uh, start this one. y equals 5 to the x. Um, so I'm going to switch it. x, 5. Why is it spread with y and red? Just so I don't feel what uh, has changed. All right, here goes the um, last piece. Solve for y. Um, first thing over here, get rid of the 7. Equals the radical y. Over here, this one's about to be done. Uh, well, that's not how it knows. Anybody know what to do on this one to solve for that y since it's up high in the exponent? Uh -huh. Divide by 5, or uh, we should say fake divide by 5. Um, someone who didn't answer, do you know what word we're going to put in front of uh, the x and the 5? I don't know if I like the answer. 
Alright, here it comes. Um, now, the bad part with this problem, we did everything on one line. So I divided and put log on one line, which is a, a no no in the world of math. Um, this one is done. He's like on the back page. So I'm going to get to him. But look how fast he is. Uh, he's only fast if you remember how to do it. Watch this y equals. And all the logs of stage, you don't solve anything. You don't punch anything in the calculator. For the y, um, someone who has an answer, uh, how am I going to rewrite that y say is the inverse? <laughs> F inverse of x. And the green system stays green. This is the official way to write it. Now again, if the problem wasn't given to you with an f of x or a g of x or a t of x or l of x, um, you can just use f of x uh, in your math that you math group. And how do you know it's an f, not a t? You know, my old math teacher said, well, if they didn't give us one to begin with, then just use f of x. If you want to start off with a t of x, if you do that. All right, let's do this last guy. Anybody know what the uh, inverse of a radical y, of a square root of y is? Uh-huh, say again. Uh-huh. So the opposite of that is to square it, or raise to the power of 2. This little 2 and this house, they're opposites. When they crash to each other, they explode. They can just go to the side. And you're done. Oh, it feels like... Does, oh, I'm sorry. Whatever you do to one side, yeah. Let's do to the other um, equation. Keep everything the same. Like being a parent, um, the kids are always asking, that's not fair, you did it for him. Of course, my kids are seven and ten, so it's like, oh, he's supposed to get more. He's the older brother. Um, of course, the older brother wants time to do more work. Like, I don't want more. You're the older brother. So, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, uh, hands on the 11. Take a look, see if you want to ask anything. I'm going to give a full 30 seconds for question. Let me help them fill their buckets. You're at the end, by the way, you're survivors, you're, you're finishers. Uh, three days and then a fish you're done, some may need an extra uh, day at the end of, on Friday to testing begins. On Wednesday next Wednesday, um, the testing schedule begins, and it's mainly the morning. So in the afternoon, every day next week, I think students can still take tests at the testing center. Uh, but I don't think technically you can do stuff here uh, unless your schedule says. So double check with your teacher. Um, that's why on Friday, I may be able to, I assume, I'll send out a text. If you don't get the text in the class, let me know. That way you can sign up and get up over here. Or you can email me, t at all All right, Thomas, go for it. Can I write down three numbers and just shift numbers around? Can I make them three different colors so you're like, oh, that's what I'm doing? Uh, now, some of you, here it comes. Um, I'm going to even use numbers that are the same or similar. I'm going to use a three, a green three. I'm going to use a red two. Should I make it negative? Yeah, I'll make it negative. Um, I don't know what you guys wrote down. If you want to rewrite it so it can be fresh in your brain, you can. If you want to watch it, I don't know how much watching does, but... Um, fine, I'm going to just do it. This problem is 3 times 2 all divided by 1. 3 times 2 all divided by 1. Um, there are three different ways to write this problem. 3 over 1 times 2. In other words, green over black times red. Because they want me to rewrite this thing in three different ways. Well, how do I write uh, that? 3 over 1 divided times 2. So just stuff like this. If this were a bed and two kids are jumping on the bed, the green guy pushes the red guy off the bed. That gets you to throw a sense. Just push him off the bed. What does he mean? He means this. 3 um, over 1 times, see when you have a fraction next door to a number at the end, it means times. That's the first answer. Check the We'll deal with the real numbers in a moment. But this is a, an equivalent expression. Hey, why is it equivalent? Because if I remultiply a fraction times a whole number, 
is you really are multiplying the whole number times the top of the fraction. In other words, when you multiply green over black times red, really you're multiplying red times the green all over black. The guys get confused, this is part of it. I'm going to do it a second time, but the second time, instead of the red guy hanging off the back, there's going to be the green guy hanging off the back, the red guy will stay on the top. In other words, red guy climbs back onto the bed and pushes sister back off the green. Uh, here's what it looks like. Um, 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 um. A second equivalent expression to the very first thing is if I had the red on top divided by the bottom. The good news is the bottom doesn't change. The denominator stays exactly the same. Um, and here comes the, the green. 2 over 1 times 3, which means the same thing as the original. Look at the second. The first two are easy, you're just rewriting this stuff. Some people have kind of a fun grade, right? I think, um, one of you guys right, so I can get back. It's like, well, I got that one. The last one is the hardest one. The last one says, the top, to write an equivalent expression, like small top, 3 times 2, uh, is, in this case, a negative 6. And the bottom never changes. There are the three answers for this problem. I'm going to do it with the big, uh, with the real problem in a second. But I want you to feel like step one, put all this 5x stuff behind it. The guy that has the two. Uh, if I could give him colors, it would be green, it would be red. The whole thing is green. The whole thing is red. Probably not the best now, but um, I like that. Alright, uh, here comes, uh, um, can someone tell me, uh, how I might write down the first possible answer on the real one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're doing the same thing, just instead of the, the, the simple version I have, you're moving it with the whole thing. an equivalent uh, expression to the one at the top. They mean the same thing. Uh, tell me different. Please tell me the second way I could write this big problem. Mm -hmm. And again, why this is actual an actual problem they're having you do. I'm not sure in the way I'm teaching it. Um, I just feel like there's not much meaning to it. Like, hey, you don't have manipulators, you don't have to move the puzzle around. Yeah, this is the way you move the puzzle around. The last thing that we're going to do is the hardest part. But everyone should have these two, and some people didn't have them. Oh, how did you say it? Uh, anybody remember how the guy said it? I mean, so. The FOIL method is what we have to do on this last part, uh, which what I don't like about it is some, some students may get confused on this last part, but my thing is, okay, if I can get them to get the first two pieces, you can always mess around with that last piece. Get the easy stuff out of the way. All right, I'm trying to talk. All right, so here it comes. It is true the last part is to multiply green times red. Here you go, green times red. I'm going to write it down, and then I'm going to do it. Some people, a couple of people did it in top part, but they didn't put that top answer over the x minus 1. So there's maybe a couple of people in this room where when you get yours back, this long thing I'm about to do, all you got to do is go put your answer over x minus 1. Now in the world of education, it is true. Um, you'd almost not want to um, show this to everybody. Like, what if the kid got it right? Like, why are you showing him? Like, all right, I got it, so why are you showing me? In a classroom setting, um, you got to do kind of the same thing for everybody. Um, that's why they have packets here. That's why they have the math online. The idea is students could just do the math at their own pace. I'm going to speed up in this section. Oh, shoot. I'm going to slow down this section. Can you watch that video again? Oh, this will be, you know. But in the class, nope. We're all on the same page. Everybody take out whatever. But I know the so what. Just take it out and let's do it all. You know, so it kind of gets messed up that way. The bottom is going to be put in just a moment. As a matter of fact, 
I'll do this. So let's see if we can see it. Um, the x minus 1 really is there. Here I'm foiling. Foil means first, outer, inner, last. So foil stands for. In other words, uh, here we go. What am I going to do? I'm going to do black. The 5x gets to do the black stuff. He's going to multiply times this guy. He's going to multiply times that black, black. Oh, I'm going to show you what somebody did in here. Or, or like maybe in the other class as well. Blue, the 2 is going to multiply times the first guy and multiply times the second guy. We call it distribute. Give away a, a negative 2 to you and a negative 2 to you. Uh, someone, when they did negative 2 times the 3, they just added like a 5. None of it is adding. None of it is adding. When you're foiling, you're always multiplying, multiplying. When you get the four answers to it, then you might be just adding a subtract. The beginning is just multiplying. So there we go. Let's see if I can get this part done. Go back up to the one above, do the same thing, and then offer you your uh, your handout thing to fix. Uh, if anyone needs to still fix up the other one, you still have time for that. If anyone finishes this one early, you start with the again for six pages. Here it comes. Where are you? Where are you here? We're just trying to tie up this um, unit. This is it. You're like at the end. You're the last piece of the puzzle. So you got the cow problem done well. Here goes 5x. Someone say out loud what 5x times x equals, please. Yeah. It's a 5x. And here you add the exponents. Like there's an invisible 1 on this guy, an invisible 1 on that guy. You add them on there. Someone in one of the problems I can't tell in here. On one of the long problems. Any of the x's that had exponents, whether you have a uh, 3, you have a 2, you have a 1, they just add them all up at the end, and then the answer was like, like 5x to the 11th power. Um, the big ugly problem, you can only combine like terms. So all the x2's, you gotta get together. All the x's of the third power, so you won't get together. You can't mix them in, you can't add the exponents, you're just saying how many of them you have. Um, here it goes, uh, someone say 5x times a 3 gives me a... Let's do the blues. 5 times a 3 gives a 15. Here comes the blues. A negative 2. Somebody is not good with positive negative. That's your calculator. So, a negative 2 times 3. Uh, uh, so, um, oh, we'll get that at the end, but do the negative 2 in the x, please. Negative 2 x. It's true. A number of times a letter, they just get stuck together. What you're doing is part blue. Negative 2 x. And then someone say that negative 2 times 3, you just said it a second ago. Look at that. See how it feels. This is probably one of those areas in math where um, a teacher doesn't feel like you. Oh. And then one's your turn. Any second? And here's the good news. You don't even have to combine like terms. No, you combine the two middle guys, the 15 and then 2 becomes a 13. But for the purposes of this problem, an equivalent um, form is just when you multiply it out, put that top answer, go to x minus 1. It's the kind of thing that if you're up late at night and you can't get to sleep, just uh, pick this up and do it. Try it out. Take a look at it see if you want to ask. Look at it for five seconds. I did right. Like, Bucket. He's cool. You can let him in. You can go backstage. The old dude's in back with the eye. No, I'll teach you. Don't bother me. He's crazy. Are you any case if you go? At least I'm backstage. That's what counts. Um, or if you're not an entertainer or I'm in the bank. You're like, oh, so this is the wall. This is where we keep all the money. You can take some notes. Yeah. Security. All right, uh, here it comes. <laughs> Step one. Let me make this a simpler problem for somebody to get the first step. It goes like this. If I made this thing red, um, I'm going to make him a red X. Some people got this one. Red X squared plus the 5. What's one equivalent way to rewrite this? Um, anything raised to the second power, you can just rewrite it as right into the, the bottom thing. This looks called a base. The X is called a base. Hey, okay, Thomas, what's one way to rewrite this? X times X. That's the first step. So for one line on this guy, 
I'll put the x minus 2 times the x minus 2. Um, plus 1. I expect or hope that you have that on your paper. If you do, sorry about the uh, repetition. Oh, shoot, hands on the other 8. I need to give them at least 15 minutes. So I'm going to leave that alone. So to write anything squared, you can write it twice. This times that. That's my go-to. The next one, I'm going to foil it. I don't know if people didn't want to do it or how you said it. Fine. I'm going to do black times black. And then blue times blue. I encourage you to write your rainbows. Uh, some people did the box method. I'm not going to do the box method. Now I'm just going to say x times the next is uh, what someone... x squared, there it is. Um, x times the negative 2 is a... Yeah, negative 2x. Uh, number times by just push it together. Um, I'll wait some of you guys up after this is done. All right, here comes um, the negative 2 times the x is a... And the... I guess this one might get messed up, but still get it right. We can add these two together to get a 4 and luck out. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is? Okay. Well, is it 4, but it's a positive 4. Um, some people, if you added it, hopefully they'll get a negative 4, but you never add it. And here's the plus 5 at the end. Plus 5 was there at the beginning. You just messed around with this stuff, but guess what? Here's the second part again. So you only need three equivalencies. The first one, the little part. The second one, multiply them out. I didn't even combine anything. Oh, we got two of them. And here comes the last one. The last one, you have choices. If you want to add the, the four and the five together, uh, and don't do anything to the rest of it, that's an equivalency. If you want to put the, the two x's together, which most people don't, because their skill set doesn't to do that. If you want to do a doubler, you do these two and this two. My recommendation is whichever one seems easiest. I think a four and a five. Most people. I'm all here doing my nine. But what do you do to that? Nothing. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's like cars in a parking lot. Once you have them all lined up, you can move them around. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it, but I do know this. I'm going to put a box around these three things, and then I put a box on the other page, which I should have. One answer. Two answer. Three answer. There are three. The last thing I'm going to say is this. I'm going to begin one problem on the other page as well. Just because you've got it, just something better. As big as ugly, I get it. We've got to do something there. So let me go back to one of the other pages. And this is going to eat up two minutes. So this next thing, I'm not teaching you. I'm just letting you see it in action. I guess I'll go uh, 58. 58, your win. I'm going to go 58. Pause for 10 seconds so, on this one. Ask a question. Go real fast and then give them a thing. All right. Oh, now I have my thing stuff. Red and red. Blue and blue. All right, red. Um, X squared times a 5. 5 X squared. Switch the numbers together. X squared times an X. X to the third power. Now, there's some people are like, thrown off by that. Shouldn't that just be a, a regular X2? Well, technically, this X here has a power of 1. When you multiply letters together, you add the exponents. Why do you have the exponents? Because you're saying how many of those bases there are. There are two here, as I did by the exponent. There's only one here. Oh, I got three all together. That's the idea. Uh, it should be negative. Some people will positive negatives. Here's a negative 1. I rather, sorry, a positive 1 times a negative 1. People are like, where is he even getting these ones from? You can just put it in. Can I put it in five if I wanted to? No, you can't put it in four. All right, uh, here it comes. All right, blues. Here comes the blues. Uh, negative one times a five. And a negative one times a negative one. I'm going to This one times that X. Let me erase some stuff so it will get whatever. Now, again, this section will be a little more lenient on just because it's like, there's so many places to get uh, a final thing correct. And then for me, I'm searching for the thing that's where it's like the long lines. So I'm up all night and just, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Show me some rainbows. Um, highlight of this section. Technically, you do the same thing over here. Um, some people didn't know what to do that minus sign. Why are you such a big problem? I get it. Just do the middle thing. If you want to see if you know what to do the minus sign. 
you can see if they can foil. Maybe put in the square thing so you can see if they can foil with the square and with the minus. That way you check it all out in just a sense. Here they're like, well, check to see if they, if they can do stuff with the square. Let's see if they can foil it and mess around with the minus sign. Let's see if they can be like, uh, what do I do here? Yeah, that was fun. All right, in any case, 